Greetings and welcome to another episode of the Empowered Parent Podcast. Joining me, as always, are <laughs> Ryan and Kayla North. Hey guys. Hey Chris. Hello Chris. <laughs> so are you trying to figure out, out a way there, to talk? Keep track of their spreadsheet. <laughs> Go ahead and mark as, as always. Mark and as always in the category there. Oh my hey, gosh! Hey, so, so, it's, so it's interesting about that Holly Talbot who um, who, who told us she was going to count. Uh, <laughs> her and her husband uh, actually ended up taking a most recent session of our, of our build course together, and we kind of got to know them just a little bit. Um, so that was kind of fun to to have the person who's making tally marks at home <laughs> actually kind of meet them face to face. Uh, thanks for doing that Holly I look forward to the spreadsheet results at some point (laughs) in the future when when you've had enough data points to properly assemble it into uh, something (laughs) worth putting in a pie chart I'd like to I just want to know what percentage of the time Chris says as always as (laughs) always it's it's gonna be pretty high you know uh, up there with uh, once again so Oh, at least, at least he doesn't say. I can't believe I have to have these two people with me. Well, now I'll get something to file <laughs> I mean, away for in a future episode. It, it, I mean, One day when he's irritated worse. with us, he's like, "Well, I guess I got to talk to these guys again." <laughs> Are you serious? One day when he's irritated with us, I bet he's irritated with us now. <laughs> he's Welcome not saying anything. <laughs> it's these no. two bleep again. <laughs> Gosh, terrible <laughs> terrible yes oh well, mr okay. chris what right. would our children if you want to hear say? what's under the bleep you have to subscribe to the patreon yeah i just took a drink feed. as you said that and i almost spewed water into my microphone that would have been terrible i'm sure that would not be good to my microphone no, that's per- again that's, that's perfect if you want to see kayla <laughs> spew into the microphone subscribe to the patreon there you go. Okay. See, we have all kinds of things to our our Patreon subscribers. Oh my! We just gosh. haven't thought them through yet. Chris, I think that's a really great idea that's that, funny. that 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 the that the G-rated version goes out on the public <laughs> feed, <laughs> but the R-rated version goes out. There's um, no R-rated version of our podcast. I'll just say that right now. You boys can all, have your all, own R-rated version. All, I am not. I, all I meant, all I meant, <laughs> mm-hmm. is that we well, all we would do is we just very st- strategically <laughs> beep some of the dialogue out. There'd have to be nothing in the underneath it, but it would get people thinking. Oh, uh, is that it? Oh, my gracious me. Okay, listen, <laughs> if, if, you have, if you have been a parent for more than a year <laughs> and you have never actually cussed in frustration to yourself, inside <laughs> of your head, in your pillow or anything, I want you to, 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 to put a comment um, on this episode, because I would like to know your name. <laughs> okay. Yeah, especially. I mean, if you got everybody when you said "in your head." I mean, well, yeah. yeah, I guess I know true. my audience, mm-hmm. dear. Because even for those of us that don't like to say those words out loud, sometimes they do come into my head. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Your inner monologue. My inner. Well, monologue. you were about to say something there, Chris. Well, I was just saying, going to say, you know, if if anyone has parented a a children, uh, children. A children. A children. If anybody has parented a children. If anyone has parented a child with a trauma history for a year and you haven't cursed aloud, um, <laughs> I'm afraid oh, it, I might have to call you a dang liar. It, it took uh, more than oh, a year. Oh, for look me. at him, Kayla. That was the You have to call version, me a dang Kayla, liar. Oh, my I, gosh, Kayla. I did, it took me many more. It took me until I had four teenagers in the house before I said them out loud. <laughs> Ka- so, I Kayla, mean, did I, have... I did a really good job. I mean, I made it like a lot of years. <sighs> did you hear uh, Chris PG that up? A dang liar? A dang did liar. I did. I did. For, I did. A darn fibber. A darn fibber. Again, I'm gonna have okay, to stop I'm taking. Gonna... I'm gonna stop taking drinks of water because y'all say funny things as soon as I take a drink of water, and then I almost. I may have them. actually did that on that, purpose. So. I figured you did. <laughs> I did not uh. do it on purpose. Just, <laughs> okay, it was just a happy timing coincidence there. Oh my goodness! All right, let's let let let, let let's get serious. <laughs> let's get serious. Yes. What are we talking about? Why, are you, if we don't get serious, are there going to be consequences for our uh, actions, <laughs> Mr. Uh, there might just have to be some consequences, Mr. Chris. 
Oh my my my, Chris oh, Turner! Oh my goodness! <laughs> what a lovely like word. Big bucks. Segways like that. That was that oh was really gosh, good. I, I I was going to say it's masterful. A, yeah. No, I think it's good. No, I was going to say it's masterful, but it was so good it probably de- deserves the BBC masterful. Masterful. <laughs> That's how good it was. The yes. accent. Like you know, it's like a, I, I do it's like an exponent that. of a compliment if you do it in BBC English. <laughs> Christopher, that was masterful. <laughs> oh, oh my goodness! Uh, yeah, I think consequences is a good one. That's uh, we had uh, we get questions about that, that all the time. A little bit, I think, last time, or, or we had teased it, if nothing else. Yeah. Um, no, I think uh, no, we didn't tease it. What happened was um, we were in the. Uh, the monthly patron Q and R chat, and um, and Carrie Ann Stanfest um, actually asked us um, some thoughts and consequences. And so when we were done with that, we all said, uh, "Yes, yeah. that's a good one to talk about." And we actually I actually went back, Chris, and looked, and I don't think we have an episode in any any time in the recent past that talks about consequences, which is a little surprising to me because, like Kayla said. Man, people want to ask about them a lot. Yeah, I know we've talked they, about them in like in context of other things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah just if not we, a, if we a had, single episode about them. If we've had a single episode, it's probably way back in the archives somewhere, and yeah. so it's definitely something good to revisit as our listenership right. has expanded. And kind of like uh, going back to something a wise pastor once said: "There is no Christianity 102 because no one ever passes 101." And mm-hmm. same thing with, with parenting vulnerable kids. Um, there is no parenting 102 because we, we never get past 101. So it's always good mm-hmm. to have those refreshers. Well, well I, I think th- that's a whole other episode to respond right. to that comment or not. But, yeah, but in the context of with this one, I'll say I'll, I'll agree with that. Yeah. Well, I think um, when it comes to consequences, the reality is that most of us, that's what we want to do initially like that's our first go-to move as a parent is to give a consequence and so initially when people come to connected parenting we're like just chunk out your consequences like don't even give them because there's so many other things that you can use and so when you are trying to help kids feel safe and you're trying to help kids feel connected in a family consequences are like like they're not even something we use like if I have a brand new kid in my home through foster care, I don't use consequences. If I adopt a child, I don't use consequences. Ryan's Can I play devil's advocate? Okay. Go ahead. I want to play devil's advocate for just a second because, because I'm going to love the thing out here for this episode that people tell you all the time. Cause I know out of the three of us, you, you, you probably have the most one-on-one contact with with people in, in terms of parent coaching. But, and here's the thing I know they always say to you. Okay, I hear you, Kayla, but how will they learn? Right. How will we prepare them for the real world? The it's real world's not real a consequence-free world. environment. Uh-huh. We're failing them by not consequencing them. Yeah. I'm just going to sit back and listen. <laughs> okay, so here's, here's how I typically would respond to that. I would say consequences have a place, but until, like, if somebody that I don't trust and I don't see as an authority over me gives me a consequence. Okay. So like some random person says to me, well, you can't do that. I'm not going to do it. Like, I don't care if they told me I can't do it or not. If they're not an authority figure that I recognize, I'm not going to do it. And when kids first come to us, they don't recognize that anyways. And so, yes, obviously we're going to have to teach them that. But the other thing is a consequence once you use it, you can't use anything else. Like you're stuck. Like if you tell them you're going to use a consequence, you have to follow through with it. And if you, so if you say, if you don't stop screaming, you're not going to go to that birthday party today. They're going to test you and they're going to scream. And then you're going to be like, crap, I already bought the birthday present. And I told the parents we were coming and and now you you have to decide, like, am I not taking them to the birthday party or am I going back on what I said? And in the reality of things, you could have probably figured out why they were screaming, what was going on beneath that. And the birthday party wasn't even connected to it, you know? Yep. Mm-hmm. So I think the biggest thing we have to figure out with consequence. Now, I guess we should probably define 
consequences in the sense of like natural consequences versus like an imposed consequence. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that's a good idea because people get these confused, right? So so logical consequences versus natural consequences. Right. Because because I think people think that um, they're the same thing. Right. So can I just give, I just want to give an easy example. Yeah. Uh, A natural consequence is you go outside, it's raining, you don't have an umbrella, your head gets wet. Right. Nobody had to do anything. It just happened. Yeah. Uh, uh, a lot of times consequence. people, well, a lot of times people will say, well, a natural consequence is if you don't do your homework, then you don't get to play outside. And I'm like, no, that's not natural. Like no. if you don't do your homework, you might get a bad grade that's or you, right. you might get in trouble at school because the teacher had, you know, something that, you know, even that's a logical consequence in that case. But like, yep. you know, there's natural consequences, but a lot of people try and put them on other things. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I think it makes us feel better about ourselves because, well, you know, when when they chose to do that, they chose the consequence. So, therefore, because it's related, it somehow <laughs> is, is natural, even though it's right. imposed. Right. But to take the rain examples uh, further, uh, a natural consequence is you walk outside without an umbrella and it's raining, so your hair gets wet. A logical consequence, which is just one imposed by another human being, is you walk outside, it's raining, you don't have an umbrella, so I come up and throw a dump a bucket of water on your head. <laughs> yes. Like, like, so to me, that, that's the difference, right? right? Right. But you have to almost explain these things in the absurd, otherwise that right. almost don't make sense to people. Right. Because for it to be a, a, a natural consequence... Nobody else has to do anything. I always use the example with parents. I'm like, if a kid takes their toy and they're mad and they throw it against the wall and it breaks, the natural consequence is they can't play with it. I'm not going to go, oh my gosh, you you broke your toy because you were mad and dysregulated. And so I'm going to run to Walmart and we're going to buy you a a new toy. You know, like we're Mm -hmm. not going to rescue our kids from those natural consequences. Um, You know, now we do have to to recognize like we don't want to let them you know the example a lot of people will say is well if you forget your lunch at home the natural consequence is that mom doesn't bring it up to the school we don't want to do those kinds of things and like while yes the you know it might be a natural consequence that if you didn't bring your lunch you're going to be hungry if there's a way for us to take our kids a lunch then we can right and so we have to be careful, too. We don't want to always be jumping in and rescuing our kids from the natural consequences. But then again, we also want to help them. If they don't have the skills to remember to bring their lunch to school, then we need to help them remember to bring their lunch to school, you know? Um, yeah. So. Well, I mean, so, Kayla, I like that example because, because what we don't always factor in is our kids' histories. Yeah. And, and I've had people tell, tell us... Um, that that, that I, I choose not to see their history. Well, okay, mm-hmm. you can do that, but but your history doesn't doesn't de- doesn't necessarily define you, but it does explain how you got here. Right. You know, and I, and I think sometimes we forget that, um, and, and 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 we want to just ignore history, but we can't ignore history. And so and so this is this is what happened. So I'm um, in, in I started reading this week, Chris. Um, the new the new um, book what happened to you the Bruce Perry Oprah Winfrey book um, I've only read the first three chapters so far and if the rest of the book's anything like the first three chapters I highly recommend it mm. um, but in the book Bruce Perry talks about and he, and he shares this idea he says we love people we love other people the way we were ourselves loved mm. and the reason that in the, when your kid forgets their lunch at home, you don't want to bring their, their lunch because you think they're going to learn. But here's the problem. Your kid may actually um, have come into the system, if they joined your family through foster care, because of neglect surrounding food. What, like, like, are you considering what lesson you're teaching them there? Because the only lesson you're teaching right. them there is you're not a safe adult. Yeah. You're not somebody who can be trusted. Right. You're not somebody who, can, um, who I can depend on. And so, I mean, we, we, we say this like every opportunity we get. The foundational piece to change behaviors. Step one, creating felt safety. Yeah. The kids have to trust you. The kids have to feel safe around you. They have to understand that they can depend on you. And by you thinking that they're going to learn a lesson 
and and you remember, hangry is a real thing, right? And so, when you're at home and the kids don't snack, they get dysregulated. I mean, thank you for the gift you're giving the teacher by not sending your kids lunch up there. <laughs> and then when the kid actually behaves poorly because predictably they're going to, then they're going to get in trouble at school. You're going to be embarrassed because one of the reasons that parents tend to consequence their kids on top of the consequences that the school dishes out is because we're embarrassed because our, because we think that our kid's behavior is a reflection on us. Right. Yeah. But I will tell you that my, that my mindset and that has shifted over the years. And now my mindset is whether you're a good parent or not, is not with, if you're a good parent, is not determined by your child's behavior. Whether you're a good parent is determined by your behavior. Mm-hmm. And, 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 and the thing that people have to get over, because I know I'm a person and I had to get over it, is the intuitive thing to do is like, here's your lesson, sunshine. I'm not bringing your lunch mm-hmm. up there. But that doesn't yeah. help at all. Because, the, because whether I meet my child... Right. Yeah. yeah, because 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 then that's because the, then I'm a poor parent because my child had a real need, and I didn't meet it. Well, I read a blog post, and I won't mention where a long time ago, um, and in this blog post, it was something along the lines of "Don't rescue my child," and it was supposed to be from this place of. Um, my kid has a trauma history and sometimes they don't listen to me when I tell them they need to wear, wear a jacket outside and you giving them a blanket is not helping them learn their lesson. And I was like, hold on a second. So you're, and this, the setup was basically like, well, I told my child to take a jacket because it was cold outside and we were going to a sporting, I think they were going to a soccer game or something. So I told, told my child not to take, you know, they needed to take a jacket. They refused to take a jacket cause they didn't want to wear it. So they were saying the natural consequence is that they were cold at the game. Now, I don't remember all the specifics of it, but what I do know is that that we can, in that situation, my kid refuses to wear a jacket. They go outside and it's really cold and they say, I'm super cold. And we can either say, well, I told you to wear a jacket. Now you're going to be cold and you'll remember next time. Or we can say, Oh, it didn't work out so well when you didn't wear that jacket, huh? Would you like to, would you like to wear this one that I brought for you? Because they were, you know, for whatever reason, they didn't want to wear the jacket. Maybe it was sensory. Maybe it was, you know, they just didn't really think, and they don't trust parents, right? They don't trust us. And so sometimes they refuse and we could, we could say that the natural consequences, they just don't have a jacket. Or we could use it as the opportunity to show them that we're going to meet their needs and we're going to take care of them. Yep. even though they didn't trust us enough that that's what we were trying to do anyways, right. right? So I think that to me was like I read it and I felt so sad when I read that blog post because I thought that poor kid, they're trying to basically say, they were trying to say to, to other people like, don't rescue my kid, they need to learn their lesson, you don't understand trauma. And I thought, you don't understand you trauma, don't understand trauma. <laughs> <laughs> because your kid doesn't trust you, which is why they right. didn't put the jacket on. But you had an opportunity to take care of them, which is going to build trust. Mm-hmm. And instead, you let them suffer in the cold. You know, like That's, I. No, uh, hold on. It did. I'm going to play devil's advocate again. Okay. That 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 but isn't that just being a permissive parent, Kayla. <laughs> I love it when you say that because I'm like, I can hear certain people that I've talked to in the past. Like, I can hear their voice coming through. They've spoken. And again, I just want to be clear. If you just jumped into the episode right now, I am playing devil's advocate. (laughs) It's not permissive parenting. So the thing is, when we're meeting our kids' needs and we're caring for them, um, it's it's not permissive. It is caring. I mean, one of the things that our kids need to learn, if you go back to our episode on the hallmarks of secure attachment, and we talked about, they need to learn how to give and receive care, how to, how to seek, seek and receive care and how to give care. Those are two of the hallmarks of secure attachment. And so when you've got a kid who's refusing your help or refusing, they don't want to wear, they don't want to take an umbrella because they don't think it's going to rain. And you're like, I just looked at the forecast and it's a hundred percent chance of rain. So I'm taking an umbrella for you, even though you don't believe me. And then you have the opportunity to give them some care. You have the opportunity to care for them and say, Hey, I brought an extra umbrella. Would you like it? Now they could still be stubborn and refuse it. And that's okay. 
because again they it, it's not stubborn it's hard for them to receive care from us yeah. it's hard for them to understand that we are trying to um care for them and you know i mean we're we're walking through a really hard season with one of our kiddos and this particular child does not want to receive care from us this kid wants to receive care from other people that are not us and i keep going back to that and going why is this kid refusing our care and it's because our care is hard this kid knows that our care is unconditional and so receiving our care is hard mm -hmm. and it's easier to push it away. Right. Yep. So I know that's not really consequences, but that's kind of, you know, when we talk about natural consequences, we also have to make sure that we don't, we don't neglect an opportunity to give our kids care that they need in that moment like taking their lunch or bringing yeah. a jacket or all of those things well because hey, it's about building connection in the first place right we want right. to put connection over consequences yes amen brother yes. hey before Absolutely. before we move on from from this point um and and i know where you're going next because you've been been check, text sending me messages in the <laughs> in the chat of you so i promise i'll be be i'll be brief but but i just want to respond um to to what you said um about the parent who likes to tell the child, instead of bringing the child a coat, when the child's cold says, well, this is why I told you to bring uh, a coat with you. It's ironic um, because, because we as parents so often love the, you tell, using the phrase, I told you so. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, in some version or other, we adore the phrase, I told you so. <laughs> but here's the irony. The number one reason that we have found over the last 15 years that we've been involved in this work, the reason that parents don't reach out for help and they tend to isolate is because they were told by their mother, their father, their brother, their sister, their granny, their grandpa, their friends, somebody close to them warned them about becoming a foster parent, warned them about mm -hmm. adopting um, adopting. And, and when it gets hard, they don't reach out to the people who are supposed to be supporting them because ironically, irony of ironies, they don't want to hear the four most troubling words in the English language. I told you so. Mm -hmm. And that's why that's so ironic to me because we love using that, that with our children yeah. and we avoid hearing it like the plague because we already know nobody likes to hear nobody that. likes the i told you so person no but right. and nobody likes the i told you so person but we love yeah. doing it to our kids yeah yeah so we had originally planned to talk about something else regarding consequences tonight but because there is a time for consequences <laughs> yeah yeah but i want to table that for our next discussion because i really liked where this one went because, uh, yeah. again, Kayla, what you, I, I guess to put it this way, the point you kept hammering home because you kept, you weren't saying these, this exact, these exact words, but you kept coming back to it again and again. Building the connection with our kids is the more important thing. Yeah. Hmm. Rather than yeah, for sure. heaping extra consequences on top of, of whatever natural ones might be there or saying I told you so. Building the connection. Because yeah. with these vulnerable kids, especially the ones that are coming to us out of foster care, you know, the situations Ryan alluded to earlier, they're already coming from a situation where they don't, they don't trust the adults. They're not going to automatically mm -hmm. trust us just because they get dumped into our home. We have to build that trust right. with them. And saying I told you so is not going to build trust with <laughs> it anyone. It doesn't help. Amen, brother. <laughs> Nobody likes the I told you so person. Right. Oh. So I guess we'll have to do a different episode on how we can use consequences. Right in a way that's actually effective after we've built those connections. <laughs> right. Come on now. So sorry if the, if you were listening to this episode <laughs> and we're hoping we were going to tell you how to use consequences, you'll have to wait. You'll just have to do another week of connecting and not using consequences. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> oh my gracious me. So as always, uh, as Kayla said, you might have some questions about uh, consequences or connecting over consequences, feel free to shoot those to us at info at one big happy home dot com. 
As always, we have our Facebook group for just for podcast listeners. All you have to do is search for the Empowered Parent Podcast community. If you're not already subscribing to our podcast, we'd love for you to do so and give us a rating either on the Apple Podcast Store, the Google Podcast Store, Spotify, wherever you're listening to us from. And if you're not subscribed, please subscribe. All you have to do is search for the Empowered Parent Podcast. As always, the Empowered Parent Podcast is committed to helping parents of foster and adopted kids through connecting, correcting, and empowering principles. Thanks for listening.